Hey y'all, welcome back. As you may be able to tell by the thumbnail and this beginning, we are doing something a little different today because since it's spring break, I'm giving you and me a break from my face. Now we are still going to have a video and that is we are going to talk about bullet journaling for mental health. Now, if you haven't heard of bullet journaling yet, I'm just dropping a link to a Bujo 101 in the description box because I am not by any means a bullet journaling expert. As a matter of fact, I don't do it the way that you are supposed to do it because I really just do my bullet journaling for mental health purposes. I don't have a weekly spread. I don't actually use it as a planning system since I do all of my planning electronically. So for me, it's just a lot more about keeping track of my mood um, and doing something that is relaxing and cute and that helps me think of gratitude. But if you are doing something with a bullet journal, you will need a doc -rit notebook, which is what I've got here. And that just means that your pages, instead of being lined or blank, will have dots like this. Um, and then you'll be able to create your own spreads. It sounds like a lot of work because it can be. My first year, I was super extra and I drew everything and I thought that everything had to be Insta-worthy. And this year, I am being patient with myself and I am doing things, well, like this where I just wrote this and not even my best handwriting and looked up some dictionary de definitions and included a Bible verse and said, okay, this is my start to my bullet journal. I've also been creating spreads that are more focused on content than anything else. So if you let me flip on over here uh, to April, sorry, should have just used the tab. That's what it's there for. Um, I'm using a combination of printables which I will, uh, in the description box, link to my bullet uh, journal post with resources. So I'm using a combination of printables and stickers and things that I've actually uh, created, which is with some washi tape, a ruler, and some markers. I've made uh, the calendar for the month with some birthdays listed and then the Torah portion for every Shabbat and then any holidays that are coming up are listed. Um, I also have a couple of other... Um, spreads that are part of every month. So again, this is literally just another printable. Another printable. I did the numbers here, and if you can tell, there's some white out because I screwed up the numbers. But part of the things that I'm trying for myself this year is accepting that I'll make mistakes. So instead of tearing out this page, I just whited out the mistake that I made, and I kept going. Um, and again, here's another printable with just habits in my handwriting at the top. Um, and here I am making a line graph. And we'll talk a little bit more about what that is as we move on. So for supplies, uh, my post that I'm linking will have more. But as you can see, this is an Erin Condren notebook. No, this is not a sponsored post. Although if Erin Condren ever wants to sponsor me, uh, please sponsor my whole life. I am obsessed with Erin Condren's products and the entire aesthetic. I love, love, love Erin Condren and have wanted to use an Erin Condren planner for years. But I just don't plan in a way that their planners would be useful. So I got this Erin Condren dot grit notebook because I love that you can change the cover. So you can just snap this one out, snap a new one in. So this uh, placeholder that I've got over here is actually a new cover that I'm waiting to switch out. Um, they do have other accessories. So these little tabs that I'm using are actually... Um, from Marine Condren as well. Apologies for the fact that April is uh, super crooked, but it's a very powerful adhesive, so I can't take it out. I've got this like bill tracking dashboard that also comes from Erin Condren. Uh, my little uh, pencil case with all of my Bujo markers has this elastic so I can actually um, attach it to the front of my Bujo and carry it around. I've got some sort of bookmark holders that I don't know why they're not on here right now because they would be super helpful. Um, I've got markers from them. Vast majority of the stickers that are on this, um, are from Erin Condren. Uh, these monthly things up here are from them. Some of the washi tape is from them. Yeah, I have an Erin Condren problem. So I will also leave my referral code in the description box in case you two want to jump in on that bandwagon. Okay, so... Let's get back to the topic and talk about Bujo for mental health, yeah? First off, let's talk about patterns. Now, my favorite spread 
of this entire bullet journal is this, which is my year in pixels. You'll see that I'm tracking certain specific moods. Because you get to customize, you choose what makes sense for you to track. So I track um, hypomania, for example. If I'm feeling hypomanic, that's the high end of my bipolar spectrum. So if I'm feeling too up there for too long, I know that I have to work on evening out my mood a little bit. You'll see that I also track um, whether I'm feeling dysfunctional or productive because I know that spending too much time on either end of that spectrum can be dangerous for me. I want to make sure I'm doing a good job of keeping myself regulated. Um, and as you guys can see, for the most part, I don't tend to spend more than um, three or so days in a row in either side of that spectrum because I tend to swing in the opposite direction pretty quickly after that. Um, and I have to be careful because anything um, longer than five days in either direction, um, be it mood or productivity, can be dangerous for me. That can be a really high or low episode, so I just have to be careful. Looking at this really helps me look at patterns. I do have a monthly tracker, so I'll show you really quickly what the tracker for, let's say, January looked like. I had my little snowflakes. Um, but it can be a little bit harder to see patterns here. So I love being able to do it with the um, year in pixels. Something else that I love about it is that it helps me find uh, the positives. So that's thing number two. These are the things that I am uh, grateful for each day of the month. Pardon the wild order they're in. I think I tried to go down and then I ended up going across and it's just, I don't even know what I was doing this month. And then I finished up here. Don't worry about it. Uh, but having to spend some time thinking about what went well, um, thinking about, you know, what were some wins for that, especially this, this is such a win for me pretty much ever, um, really helps me think about what is going well. And in the darkest of times, um, helps me figure out what makes me feel better. Now, I want to take you guys to a special place in March. So let's travel here. Uh, this line graph helps me keep track of how much water I'm drinking, how many hours I'm sleeping, how many words I've written, and how much activity I've done. As you can see, uh, not the most consistent in my workout time last month um, or in my water drinking. Yikes. Um, slept okay. Not the most consistent in my writing either. But being able to look at this helps with both of the last two things, right? So it helps me find um, some patterns and figure out what the positives are, such as, hey, my sleep looks way better um, than it has before. But it also helps me make healthier choices. So now that I'm looking at this whole month, I have a better idea of what I need to do better, which is definitely drink more water. Did better with that at the beginning of the month than I did at the end. I also know that I felt a little bit better um, towards the end uh, there in terms of productivity. And I think that having a little bit more activity helped me do that. So this helps me have more data when it comes to making better decisions. So does my habit tracker, which I'm going to flip through. Now I try to be really careful of what I track in my habits. So for example, um, where is it? Call home. I'm not great at doing it. That's like four calls home in a month. So I know that this is something I want to work on that I've included in this month's tracker as well. Um, I also know that like writing creatively is something that I'm doing a lot more this month because of um, NaNoWriMo, but it might be something that I might want to keep including to track. So this is just something that's so personal, but it gives you an opportunity to keep track of what matters to you. Now, that's the last thing that I want to show you is for NaNoWriMo, I have this like um, as a placeholder. I'll fill this out after this recording. I just didn't want to have to cover it to uh, prevent you from seeing spoilers. But I am keeping track of how much I write this month, and I have written every day so far. I'm actually ahead of my NaNoWriMo goal, which is very exciting. This doesn't happen very often. I'm going to, you know, knock on some wood so I don't jinx myself. But uh, these two pages will be something that I hope will help me remember that I had success in doing this big scary thing for myself um, this month. And it's just a way for me to focus on what's important. I will leave you with this. Um, also, Erin Condren, bit of a quote, which is what I look at every time that I'm going to track my NaNoWriMo progress. You are beautiful, capable, and worthy. 
Enjoy spring break, CPS peeps, and I will see y'all next week. Bye.